Okay, YouTube, welcome back to Europa Universalis 4 and our luck of the Irish achievement attempt. I get this loaded and hop right in. If you recall, we are working on building up our naval fleet for uh, in preparation for our return, our triumphant return to Europe, where we're going to use uh, France and uh, most likely Spain to help us go after England and conquer the British Isles. Right now we are dealing with, I believe, still a little bit of a roll risk in uh, the countries that we just conquered last time, Seneca and Susquehanna. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. But it's going down as the religion gets converted. It uh, is going to continue to decrease. I'm just going to check really quickly actually and see cultures. If there's any cultures I have left to convert. There are some right here that I own, but unfortunately I uh, they still have nationalism so I can't convert them quite yet. And over here again dealing with nationalism I do own the uh, Ontario. It's weird when you zoom out it changes. Um, oh that's because that's culture I see. Uh, but yeah we do own, we do own Ontario, Huron and Niagara but of course we can't convert those cultures quite yet. Uh, we also have as mentioned Susquehanna and Seneca and we're not able to convert them yet either but everything else we own is our culture which is excellent good so we're all set not to worry about that uh, I'm not gonna go for this idea I'm gonna save up for the military tech I'll get military ideas when we're ahead and as you can see we should get ahead pretty quickly we do have uh, nine military power points being gained every month thanks to a national focus and a level two uh, military advisor Ships are being built, the people being converted to our religion. I've got enough points that I can start investing in another cardinal for what it's worth. Still waiting for a decent advisor. I'm not worried about truces. I'll double check before I go to war so it doesn't really affect me. Uh, as I build ships, what I'm going to do is make sure I always have all the temples that can be built, all the docks can be built and all the constables. So if I ever open this up and I have something left to build, I'm going to build that and that'll be my focus more so than ships. But when, when I can see that all three of those are built everywhere that I can, I'm going to be building heavy ships. And as you can see I have a lot of them. All of these are heavy ships being built. So there's a lot of them being built but we are going to need a bunch to deal with the British and their massive army. There's one ship got built, there's another one, a third one, France. Second Lithuanian conquest of Danzig. I will accept, I don't want to take a 50 prestige hit, plus I think that's going to be a pretty easy war for France, which means we'll be able to just kind of sit back and, uh, and do nothing, and have France like us for having helped them out, even though we didn't help them out at all. All right, who needs a constable? You need a constable, okay, here you go, have a constable. Enjoy. Okay. In fact, I can build two more ships now as well. Let's get them going. Good. Uh, I'd like to get up to at least 136, then I'll reevaluate. I'll take a look at uh, what the British fleet has, what kind of allies the English have. And that's going to determine how I'm going to approach this. One thing that I was thinking of would be good would be to, if I could dominate this Western Europe trade note and collect the trade that's in it, but as you can see England is patrolling with 16 ships. So if I can put more than 16 ships in there I can take a bunch of that trade. But until I'm able to put that many ships, I was thinking 20 for example, I'd put 20 ships in there. But until I'm actually able to put 20 ships in there, I don't think there's any benefit in pulling any of my merchants away from where they're already raising money. So we'll see when I have a large number of ships whether or not I have the uh, the limit to spare, the uh, naval force limit to spare to invest in 20 light ships to patrol that trade node, or if I want to hold out, wait and see. Uh, if I'm going to need more heavy ships instead. And that's going to depend on the state of, of uh, 
England's forces at the time. Royal marriage of Portugal, okay. And some harsh treatment expired in Ontario and Sioux. So go ahead and deal with that. Ontario and Sioux. Um, and uh, that royal marriage of Portugal makes me wonder, do we have royal marriages with everybody else or did they all end? No, we're still royal married with Spain. Still have royal marriage with France? We do. Okay, excellent. Then we'll just keep plugging along. Oh, I can build a bunch more ships. And I think... There we go. Colony obviously finished somewhere. Constables can go in. Okay, that's it. So then we'll build another heavy ship. We also have a mission to, uh, to get more than 20 heavy ships. So once we have accomplished that... We will get uh, a big chunk of naval attrition there too. And that's coming along. We got 14 already. England's going to war with Scotland, okay. Who's uh, Who else is jumping in on that war? This may be the perfect time actually if England... Uh, if England... Scottish, Brazil, Austria and Cologne. Um, if England gets kind of their butt kicked in a war, that would be a good time for us to maybe hop in against England. Especially if our allies are willing to join us, or if, they, you know, if they've managed to whittle down uh, England's navy a significant amount. So we're going to have to keep an eye on how exactly that war goes. I don't think Austria is going to be much help for Scotland, though. So I think we're going to see Scotland lose another chunk of land to England. Oh, and I have spare unitypes, and I wasn't paying attention, so I have no idea. Latin Caracol Infantry, that's what I have, so it was obviously... Oh, misclick there. Obviously cannons that are upgraded. 2.4, wow. Saint performs a miracle. Gain stability or 50 papal influence. I don't really care about the papal influence, so I'll take the stability. Okay, I know that I'm at war, you can go away. Got a colony ready to finish in Bannock. Which one's Bannock? Pablo. Hero. Which one is ba Oh, that's Bannock there, okay. And you're doing it without a con colonist too. Good for you, buddy, good for you. Growing quickly with no help, doing it all on your own. Uh, I'm going to take the two base tax, gave us a bunch of money, uh, no buildings to build, so more heavy ships it is, and in fact now we're going to be at 107, I want to get up to one, uh, what was it, 157, so we can certainly build a whole whack of ships. Basically I want to, once I've built, um, once I only have 20 naval force limit left, I'm just going to build nothing but heavy ships. Once I have 20 naval force limit left, that's when I'm going to reevaluate the status of the British Navy. Because realistically, my training transports will be as much as I'm going to worry about right now. Um, and those heavy ships are going to be what I'm going to use to fight against their navy. All right, calling in Bannock is self-sustaining. Ready to start a new colony. I'm going to have to, because there was no colonist there, I'm going to have to pull a colonist out of somewhere else. Pull him out of Pyro. Pyro, Pyro, I have no idea which one it is. And uh, I had done a line here where I've killed all the natives so that I can colonize without having to keep military forces there watching over my colony. And I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down that line. So I'm going to decide where to go there. Okay, good. Excellent colony. Another self-sustaining colony. Excellent. I didn't realize I had another one so close to being done. So that one will go right here. And it's kind of nice. As you can see, we're kind of closing the gap. We're going to be completely surrounded everywhere, and we'll just be kind of moving in towards the middle. And bit by bit as we go, of course, we are taking out the odd native tribe here and there, conquering a province. You know, one here, one there. I'm not doing it too quickly. I don't really want to take too much aggressive expansion from it. There's not a lot of natives left, but um, I don't want to have to deal with like a giant just federation uh, all coming after me at once. Because some of them do have a lot of troops despite their small size. Like they get the native tribes, they get two territories side by each and they got, you know, 
18,000 soldiers somehow. 18,000 strong army. So they seem to be a little a little more powerful than, uh, than you or I would be, I think, if we were playing as a native tribe. And now, of course, because colonies finished, that means we have places to build. There we go. And I can get three more heavy ships going, so let's do that. So will take us up to, what is it, 119 we'll be at now? Yeah, 119, good. Uh, and all this building that we're doing, all these naval forces, I was going to say, it's probably going to start costing us a lot of money, but we're still making a ton. Missionary strength, natural revolt, inflation reduction. Yeah, but I don't want a plus three. It would be a little bit too much for me. As expected, France is uh, managing to deal with Lithuania quite nicely. We had a Regency Council at some point as well, right? Is that still going on? Nope. Regency Council's over. We have a claim. We have a, an heir, a 416. Wow. Okay. Alright, good. Um. So let's see, we have some truces, but we don't have a truce with the Cherokee, do we? No, we do not. Um, do we want to go after the Cherokee? I think it was the Choctaw I was looking at, wasn't it? They had some rich provinces. See, who are you at war with? You are at war with the Creek and the Chickasaw. And you are going to lose that war. So this province may change hands. We'll reevaluate then. I'll wait for this to finish. But yeah, it's a five. I mean, this is a five base tax and a seven base tax province. Chickasaw and the Creek don't really have that much going for them in terms of income. I'm not too concerned about grabbing those. Maybe the Comanche, it's only a... Oh, there we go. We hit our 20 large ships. The Comanche might be worth going after. They're a, a two income province that they have. And they're kind of in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by all these one income provinces. So they're kind of... They're the rich man for that area. Okay, let's get all our ships in here. Navy's arriving. Okay, look at that. 27 heavy. Just out of curiosity, what is England sitting at? Switch my force limit. Oh, look at that. I have the biggest naval force limit of anybody. England. We already have more ships than England. More of every kind. Now, these 70 are protecting trade they're probably not going to stop protecting trade. So I need enough to deal with kind of all of England's ships at once. So I'm just going to keep going. We're making lots of money still. I'm just going to keep building heavy ships. Uh, what I got? 16, 19, 20, 21, 22. 122 will be my status of my force limit. 122 of 177 for uh, naval force limit. I'm under my army force limit as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I could create another army of 10 if I so chose. But uh, I have plenty of troops right now, and I don't really want to see my income drop some more. I like the fact that I'm making money, especially now that I want to build bigger ships and be able to kind of... Ooh, Scotland now controls the colony. Oh, wow, it's way down there. Who really cares? I guess if you're Scotland, you got to take what you can. Seeing as how they are being completely decimated at home. Sorry, Scotland. You know, we were allies at one point, but you called it off. You didn't want to be allies, because I left. I bet you regret that decision now. Now that I have the largest naval force limit in the world, and I'm fairly high up on the army force limit as well. Look at that. Right below France. And it's only going to grow as I take more and more territory. Okay. What's happening here? Harsh treatment expired in Pueblo. You're upset, so obviously it needs to get harsh treated again. Okay, we're building. Have any buildings uh, to complete anywhere? Nope. We can build a bunch more ships. 16, so I'm at 122. 23, 124, 125, 126, 
just gonna be able to wreck face when we head back to uh, to Europe. Okay, come on home, ships. Come see your new fleet. It's not even in a fleet anymore. It's more of like an armada, you know. Thirty carricks coming at you. That's gonna be a little daunting, I think. Um, when do we get an upgrade? How do we see that? There we go. Level fifteen. We get an upgrade to galleons. Um, and let's, out of curiosity, what tech is England at? They're nowhere near 15, I assume. Holy smoke, they are. They're at 18. They're 18 across the board. Wow. Well. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know what the difference is between... A, uh, I guess that's true. I've been spending a lot of points coring and... Um, Converting cultures, converting religion, and all kinds of harsh treatment. So that has slowed me down a little bit. I'm curious, though, to know what the difference is between a Carrick and a Galleon. I'm actually going to look that up. I'm going to do that right now. Uh, this is a good point to end this episode. It's been uh, over 15 minutes already. But, uh, yeah, there was, wasn't much happened here in this episode. We did some, some more colonization, a couple more colonies. Built a whole bunch more heavy ships. Uh, continuing to complete our assimilation of the territories that we captured. Keeping an eye on England and how their power sits in preparation of going over there. Uh, and uh, soon, soon we'll be able to return triumphant. And uh, get vengeance for Scotland. Or, I mean, we're not going to make Scotland show up because I just want to conquer everything. But um, we'll, we'll get vengeance for them anyway. But that will be for future episodes. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.